Hi everybody, as you see here, I'm going to focus on the brain stem cross section. So in my previous video, I showed you some uh, cross sections at the level of the medulla oblongata. In this video, I'm going to focus on the cross sections and the palms, the second part of the brain stem, which is really, really crucial area. And it acts like a bridge connecting the brain or cerebrum to the cerebellum. It's also uh, connecting the brain, the spinal cord via those ascending and descending fibers. Fibers. It also comprises of some nuclei related to the cranial nerve five, six, seven, eight. So I'm going to use this drawing, and I'm going to use this model and this model. And at the end of the video, you can find a question about the content of the video and try uh, yourself and try your knowledge. Now I'm going to give you an overview about the pons. Where is the pons? If you look at this mid-sagittal section through the head and neck, you can find the brain at the top and you can also find the cerebellum and you can also see here the brain stem. So brain stem has three parts. At the top you can see the midbrain. This uh, fat guy is the pons and down here we have the medulla oblongata which continues down as the spinal cord. So in this uh, video I'm going to focus on the internal features of the pons. Here is the pons in the middle of the brain stem. So if you look at here to this um, drawing at the top we have a coronal section of the brain so you can see the right and left uh, hemispheres of the brain. In the middle, we have the brain stem, which is comprised of the midbrain. This fat guy is the pons, and down here we have the medulla oblongata. It continues down as the spinal cord. Behind the brain stem, this blue represents the uh, cerebellum, which has two uh, hemispheres. If you take a cross section through the spinal cord, you can see this this butterfly shaped structure as the gray matter which is surrounding by the white matter. At the center of the gray matter you can see the central canal and this drawing is a cross section at the level of the pons so I'm going to focus on the pons today. If you take a cross section through the pons you should ask yourself some questions. The first question you should ask yourself is spaces. Which spaces we have into the uh, pons. So, you know, if you look at here from the posterior view, in this area, we have this diamond shaped area. It is called the fourth ventricle. This is the fourth ventricle. So, at the back, if you take a cross section through the pons, we have this area. It is fourth ventricle. So here is the posterior, here is the anterior. So posteriorly we have this area, it's called fourth ventricle. Within the fourth ventricle, we have cerebral spinal fluid or CSF. Fourth ventricle continues up and makes the uh, cerebral aqueduct, which is within the midbrain and it continues down as a central canal within the medulla oblongata and spinal cord. So here we have the fourth ventricle. The second question you should ask yourself about the descending tracts. So which descending tracts we have within the uh, pons? You know, pons acts like a bridge, as I mentioned earlier. So it's connecting the cerebrum to the cerebellum. It's also connecting the uh, brain to the uh, brain stem nuclei. It's connecting the brain to the spinal cord. So it acts like a bridge. So it's connecting different areas to the brain through the descending tracts. So descending tracts, one of the most important descending tracts is spinal. Uh, sorry, the corticospinal tract. So as its name suggests, it's coming from the cortex. It's coming from the cortex motor area. Imagine that this is the motor area of the cortex. Within the motor area, as you know, 
uh, we have the cell body of the corticospinal tract and then axon coming off and getting into the internal capsule, passing through the internal capsule and passing through the midbrain and then passing through the pons and passing through the medulla oblongata, crossing at the caudal part of the medulla oblongata and running all the way down through the spinal cord and into the spinal cord. It's landing here, it's a lateral white column. So this is the corticospinal. In addition to the corticospinal, we have corticopantine. Again, they are coming from the cortex, motor cortex. It's coming down, passing through the internal capsule, like the corticospinal, passing through the medulla, and then getting into the pons. Within the pons, we have some pontine nuclei. So they are synapsing onto the lower motor neuron within the pontine nuclei. And then second or lower motor neuron coming off from this area, getting into the cerebellum through the middle cerebellar peduncles. So the anterior area of the pons is a little bit bald. It, it makes a fat guy. As I showed you earlier, this is the brainstem model from the anterior view. At the top, we have midbrain. In the middle, this fat guy is pons. You can see it's a little bit bald. And down here, we have uh, the um, metal oblongata. Why pons is so bald anteriorly? Because it contains the pontine nuclei. It also contains the corticospinal tracts, corticobulbar and corticopontine tracts. They are passing through the anterior part of the pons. So imagine that here is the anterior part of the pons. It's a little bit bald. It's projected anteriorly because it contains here uh, the pontine nucleus. This is the pontine nucleus. Pontine nucleus. So the upper motor neuron coming from the cortex, it's called corticopontine. And getting into this area, synapsing onto the second order neuron. So imagine that we have like this. They are coming down and synapsing onto the lower motor neuron. And then lower motor neuron coming off from the pontine nucleus, crossing or decussating to the opposite side. And getting into the cerebellum through the middle cerebellar peduncles. So imagine that cerebellum is here. Cerebellum. So they are getting into the cerebellum through the middle cerebellar peduncles. So it is called corticopontine and panto cerebellar. So here we have this area, we have pontine nuclear. That's why it's really, really bulges. And cortico pontine coming from cortex, passing through the cerebral peduncles of the midbrain, getting into the pontine nuclei, and then it's crossing the lower motor neuron, crossing the um, crossing the opposite side or decussating and getting into the cerebellum through this middle cerebellar peduncles. Here is called MCP or middle cerebellar peduncles. So just keep in mind we have corticopontine. In addition to the corticopontine we have corticospinal tracts. As I showed you it's coming from the cortex going down passing through the pons and getting into the spinal. It's called corticospinal. So in addition to these 
fibers. Here we have cortical pontine like this. They are intermingled with this transverse fiber. So imagine that we have cortical pontine fibers. They are coming from cortex to the pontine. And in, in addition to that, we have corticospinal. They are passing through this anterior bulge area of the port pons, getting into the spinal cord. So you can find it here. We also have corticobulbar. So again, they are coming from the cortex, motor area of the cortex, getting into the pons, midbrain, and medulla. And finally, they are synapsing onto the nuclei, cranial nerve nuclei to the brain stem. It's called corticobulbar or corticonuclear. 